Hello everyone, welcome back once again to Undermine. But of course things are afoot if you watched the preceding episode. So, the meteors have now begun to fall. And if I come all the way up here, oh, we can just see the first signs of them there. That little piece of fire. They haven't managed to get too far down just yet. But uh, they are becoming increasingly frequent. Yep, yep. Yep. Oh. Oh. Cool. I have to admit, this is actually kind of pretty. <laughs> just these, like, pitch black areas that are just, like, lit from underneath by the lava, by, by the, the fire. Looks really nice to me, honestly. But, uh, yeah. Most of it is contained to the spawn chunks because they're the only chunks that are constantly loaded. Uh, but a few smatterings go a bit, go a bit further out. And. Fairly soon, we are going to be closing up this map and opening up the next one, and that means that I kind of need to get a bunch of work done quickly. So, if we head back down, right, and I switch to a more meaningful, like, speedy command here. Oh, also got the signs and chests back on the whole of the map now, so yay. Uh, so, if we come down here, we have a number of projects get done today, and oh yeah, slight hiccup in the course of uh, last event, I kind of lost the vast majority of my goods. I did keep the stun baton though, so that's something. So, But I lost my armor, I lost my, uh, my quick pick, I lost my newspaper sword. I lost my lost soul, I lost my speedy, like, flower, which I might regret really just for, like, the end of the, the end of the map. But, uh, yeah, today we are putting in enchanting, and then we are also going to be finishing off Ravine Town once and for all, just before the server ends, or just before the map ends. The server, of course, is staying put, but it might be down for, like, a day or two whilst I change the map over and make sure everything works properly. Anyways! So, I now have to come up with a design for an enchanting table that hopefully hasn't been done 500 million times in human history already. Um, oh boy. So, I will see you in a moment. Right, so I hope you've all enjoyed that little time lapse. It really is possibly one of the littlest time lapses I've done on this server in the entire time we've had it up running. Um, so here we have the enchanting hall, and it's really, really not much, honestly. <laughs> um, so what we have here is a adjustable, uh, like enchanting setup. Let me just go into game mode zero so I don't actually break anything. Um, we've got the anvil down here for renaming as well as repairing it, although that's pretty more of a forge thing, and also for adding enchanted books. We have two large chests for the storage of materials, and we have the enchanting table, which if I hop back enter here, I can actually get something to enchant so I can show, it off, show this off. So currently, it only goes as high as level 12, but if we use this, we can increase it to 14, and it goes all the way 
up to 30, which is the cap. And evidently, I'm really up for Bane of Arthropods. Wow, I'm, I'm up for making a new newspaper. Amazing. Uh, so yeah, and then we can just reset it. Really nice. So this works off... If I just grab... This is what happens when you lose all your gear. You have to, like, put up with not having it anymore. So, if I smash through here... So... Here we are just getting a comparator signal out of the uh, the item frame, which tells us the tilt of the item. And then we are very carefully shooting it down. And we retain the signal here, but here we actually let it drop one. That's because there is actually one more... Uh, like, there's always at least a, a value of one inside of the item frame, provided that there is an item in it. So... In order for us to actually hit full zero here, we need to actually subtract one. So we do that very carefully just by this. And then, every time that we uh, turn the item, so to there, the power goes up another step, which allows us to trigger another piston. And it's a little bit tricky around corners, as we'll see here, because we have to firstly trigger this one, but we also have to carry the signal around again so that we can hit another one and actually get into the next line. So, we manage that quite happily. If I took out, like, you might wonder why don't I just have another piece of redstone here. Um, it's because if I did that it wouldn't actually escape. There would be too little power. Um, and I wouldn't get all the way around. But, as a consequence of this, I do, so you get two for your bag. You, see, you get two for your turn on the, uh, on the corners. Which is not terribly much. I don't mean a hubris is what I can hear squelching. So, you can very fine tune exactly what level you want on here. It's really cheap, ultimately speaking. And I went for a slightly, um, a slightly more savannah kind of look. I went for a bit more of a, uh, we're in the desert, we're, we're mosing along, that kind of thing look, I guess. Need to fix that up slightly. Uh, didn't spot that in the time lapse. But, um, Overall, I like it. It's a good penultimate time lapse. And yes, I do say penultimate because the world is ending. We're gonna be changing over to a brand new map, and that means that all of this is going to be totally wiped out. I'm going to be in a completely different series, albeit on the same server doing, doing different stuff. So, Ravine Town isn't finished currently. I'm not leaving this undone. I'm le I'm finishing off Ravine Town. Whatever is left of this world, Ravine Town will be here. So I am going to make sure that I finish this. So with that in mind, let's get to another time lapse, shall we? See you then.
Right, so that is the last time lapse on this map. This that is the last time that I'm gonna be working on Ravine Town in an episode like this. That is the end, I guess, in a broad manner of speaking. So let's have a walk through, take a look. So we've got the portal that was fired up all those moons ago with its lovely face, which is evocative of a ravine-based settlement that I and a bunch of people did way back when on the uh, the Learning Ready Run fan server. That's how back it is. So that's why I rebuilt that. And through here, nothing's really changed in a long while. There's just been piles of chests, and now there's a whole freaking ton of uh, golden apples waiting for me. Uh, that's my recording buttons that are just convenience so that people know when I'm recording. Down here, we have one of the first constructions. If I stand here, we can just probably, yep, see the skeletons going down. This is how we got our arrows and our bones and our XP early on. And then the Halloween Christmas decorations were here for ages. Slightly redid up here. This is nice, nice and clean. And here's where the bulk of the changes have happened today. So up top, we've got spruce logs lined with uh, redstone lamps and some spruce and, well, some dark oak, actually, and some oak uh, stairs to make give it a nice bit of lighting built in. Looks good. All of the different stops, like, pop out of it very nicely. We've got in here the forge, our first major construction here. So I've speckled the floor a bit with uh, bits of raw andesite and even some coal to give it a nice touch, but it looks pretty good with just cobblestone. Cobblestone! is often maligned, but it can look good. You just have to be careful how you use it. Um, but yeah, and then we've got the roof here, which now has some wooden beamings across with the never forget. You usually think of this would be the other way around, but no, it looks quite nice this way. And then down there is our accessibility railway. And then along, we have the new enchanting stop, uh, which really pops with the uh, with the oranges of this red sandstone and we just come through here we can get all of our enchanting done however we like to do it very nice once again never uh, stop there for the rail and we can actually just just about come over here so we can get all the way across here we go I do like the highlighting that the uh, the, the standard oak at the bottom here provides and, it, it, yeah, it just sort of looks like a light shadow, if you will. Here we have the brewing. I, can, I wanted to think about changing these out, but it looks nice. It's just like an inset thing. Very good. So you can get all, your, all of your ingredients. You can get all of your brewing done. I haven't had time to really, like, load these up because so much going on. And there's the button you push when you want it to start off so you know when it's all done. Then moving along... Our last stop on the top row, we have storage, which has been tidied up a little bit, uh, but I kind of like it as a little bit of a mess. Makes the most sense to me. So we've got in here, we have uh, Sopa, and we also happen to have the Empire Free. And of course, there's going to be something interrupts me. I've been recording for like two hours here. Uh, so the Empire Free, all of the stuff. Honestly, this sorting system never quite got finished. And also never quite worked, um, but it does look lovely. I do like the way it ended up looking. So there's that, at least. And over here we can rejoin, go to the other side, go to up here, although there's nothing up there. Uh, or we can take a little look down here. We go through the grinder. Phew, love you. And through here, past the uh, past the like. The, 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 the trash compactor, if you will, I guess. Uh, we can come around here, and we can go up to here, which is our disabled access for uh, disabled dwarves, and that will take you very neatly around to all of these locations. And I've got some oak and, well, some oak logs, of which we have plenty, as well as some uh, jack-o'-lanterns to provide nice even illumination. It's very, uh, very well kept here. We also have some guide rails here. In case the dwarf wants to, wants to, uh, wander around, they don't have to worry about potentially falling off. And we have, as an example here, we have cobblestone, because I thought combining the cobblestone and the inset lighting here of the jack-o'-lanterns with, with, uh, the logs really gave it a nice kind of 
uh, a nice kind of mine shafty feel. So you almost feel like just exactly, especially over here, you almost feel like these uh, these logs are supports that are holding the roof up. It looks really nice. I feel it's a little bit of a hodgepodge, I admit, but it looks nice. So you can, this gets you to everywhere up top that you want to go. So there is no worry about having to get off the train or anything. You can just go wherever you want to go. And that then brings us to the base, the bottom of the ravine. So this little tunnel has been here for ages, but I've never found a use for it. So I've just condemned it, basically. <laughs> no entry, no real reason why. It just It's nice to have a little bit of con condemnation in your, in your underground builds like that. So to the left here, we have the Week in Ravine Town, which is our newspaper seller. So hello again, sir. Good to see you. Off to the right here, we have Romero, who is uh, still still a zombie, but that's fine, because he, he's kind of, he likes being a zombie. He's a member of our disabled community, and we love him. And to the left here, Neo is a massive pain to cater for, because hubris won't shoot at me. So, uh, here we have Neo's little uh, aquarium. You can, you can see his tail flipping about in there. And next to him... We have Wilfred Piggly, so nice little sort of alchemy shop, I guess, here for Wilfred Piggly. And then next door to Romero, we have Savini, naturally. Hello, how are you? And I want that cake with you. Then we have this nice little gardeny area. So for ages, there was a spot of grass here, and it used to have a witchery Wickerman rebuild on top of it. Uh, before that got taken down, there was just a chest in the middle here. And I thought, why not have a bit of green space down here? So now we have a little bench, a little, like, park. It's not much, but it's cosy. And at the end here we have Hubris. Hey Hubris, how you doing? I won't just do your swimming. In that nice little, uh, sandstony, desert-styled pool. And... Way down here at the bottom of the ravine, at the end of the ravine that we just never really got to use. There's a little bit of cake that's still left over from when the place got cake during my during my birthday celebration so ages back. Uh, there's just sort of a a cave where you can go mining, I guess. But uh, yeah, that that is Ravine Town. That is it. It's done. I I can't do any more to it. I honestly I got. Uh, I guess the phrase would be railroaded out of working on Ravine Town because of the sitch at the start of the year. So consequently, I just did. I, I lost like four or five months off of this thing, and it's sort of lagged behind a fair bit as a consequence. But I love the place. It's nice. It feels cozy. It feels like a it feels like a warm and friendly place to be, and I'm glad I got to, I got to finish it today. So, I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've liked watching Ravine Town grow from a hole underground into what it is today. And I will catch you all next time for the end of Undermine's map. See you then.